Hello everyone and welcome back to Cool Bike Projects. It's almost Christmas and we have a great bike project to work on today. But before I forget, I have a very special announcement. Next Friday, December 23rd at 6 p.m. Central Time, I'll be doing my first live stream. This will be kind of a Q&A where we talk about projects from 2022 as well as upcoming projects for 2023. I'll also be giving away this incredible $230 night riding light thanks to this company called Magic Shine. This is a 5,000 lumens night riding light, lasts hours and hours, perfect for mountain biking, road biking, or whatever kind of biking you want to do with it. So in order to win, all you have to do is join me for the live stream. You'll make a comment in the comments below, and I'll pick someone at random to win this incredible light. Now, let's check out this awesome bike. So this bike has quite a bit of history to it. Um, in the early days of Hercules bikes, as I understand it, they would bond uh, a lot of their early tubes. And so you have a double top tube right here that goes into a bonded lug. Down here below, this thing has been re-welded a couple times, it looks like. And the original frame color was red. So part of what I want to do, besides make this thing mechanically sound, is we're going to be grinding this down, rebrazing this if needed, and then we'll be sending this off to my friend Mark Rainey at Grody Brothers Bicycles in Topeka, Kansas. He's gonna do a custom powder coat on this to get this back to as close as original as possible. Here you can see the grips are not original. And then in the back here, what is original is we have the Sturmy Archer three speed that is still shifting pretty good after all this time. So this will be part one of probably a two part bike video, but this should be awfully fun to watch. So one of the first things I noticed about this bike is that it was actually licensed in the city of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho back in 1989. Another cool thing is the pulley system he uses for pulling the Sturmy Archer cable. Here you can see the old cable stop in the front, going to a hard 90 angle to this uh, rotating pulley, and then down to the chain of the three-speed Sturmy Archer. Pretty cool. Here we got some old cotter pins. So the detail and character on this old bike is like a lot of bikes from that age. Here we have a head badge that may or may not have been uh, bonded to the frame. The lugs on this thing are huge and everything about it from the, uh, the lug bottom bracket to the uh, oversized kickstand is awesome. It even has a grease port to keep things rolling without having to take the crank set apart. Lots of nostalgia in this frame set and even the old parts that are on this bike. So now it's time to see if we can't get this frame back in better shape and get this bike restored for a good friend. So sit back and enjoy as we tear this bike apart and see if we can't get the frame in better shape.
So back in the olden days, we used to have a cotter press that we would use to take out the crank arms. And we actually had replacement pins, which you can still buy today, but it was a very rare thing for us to do. So going over to my dad's shop where he still has his welding tools, grinders, and everything else, we were able to go ahead and tap them out and grind off the rust so they'd go back inside. Now that we have the crank arms and bottom bracket situated, it was time to address the old brazing. From an untrained eye, this looked like a glob of melted solder that had been repainted over once or twice with black rattle can. And so I was curious to see how we'd be able to tell what the old brazing looked like compared to the new. So after gently clamping the bottom bracket of the frame in a vise, we set up a grinding disc to start the process of pulling back some of the additional brazing. The hope was to keep all the original braze that was there that needed to be and to pull off and smooth what wasn't required. Needless to say, there was a lot of braze on this frame. After grinding off the majority of the braise, we switched to a number of different grit sizes to sand things down and smooth it out. And finally we came down to this cone rasp where we were able to get the circular shape we were after. It's not perfect, but the brazing itself is complete. And we look forward to sending this bike frame off to get this sandblasted, powder coated, and ready to reassemble for my good friend. Thanks for watching everybody. And please tune in this Friday at 6 p.m. for our giveaway. Talk to you soon.